probably licking their wounds, realizing that he had just read their mail. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. He that is without sin cast the first stone. Amen. Amen. And man hasn't learnt much over the years. Right. We're still about as dumb as we always have been. Amen. Amen. We're so right. so quick to throw stones. Right. Amen. Right. At others. Hallelujah. But someone once said, if you live in a glass house, don't be throwing no rocks. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. None of us are perfect. Amen. Only one that has ever been perfect and sinless. Amen. Right. We are made perfect today through His blood. Right. We are justified, <laughs> Brother Wade, through His blood Come and on. no other way. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. The last two weeks, <laughs> we've been talking about how important the Word of God is. Amen. And we're going to try to finish that up this morning. But we started out two weeks ago and the sermon was inspired by the visitation whenever I went to Sister Martine's funeral and I went, we went early that morning because Reese had to work that afternoon and we uh, went into the funeral parlor there and we walked up to the casket and as I told you before, I, I'd already said goodbye to Sister Martine. She wasn't there anymore. That old, that old earthly vessel was. But, and I looked into that casket and there in her little frail hands, Sister Wade was her Bible. And her Bible was taped together with duct tape. Yeah. It was worn around the edges. Come on. The pages were all wrinkled up. Amen. Oh, I could have shouted right there. Amen. Oh, Hallelujah. True. Her Bible was falling apart. Right. But she wasn't. Amen. 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 And that's not a coincidence. I told you, it's no coincidence that Granny's Bible was falling apart, but her life wasn't. Amen? True. And I could just see her in the Spirit. I could see her on those nights whenever she couldn't sleep, Brother David, going to the old book and turning the pages. Right. I could see her, Brother Wade, as she, when she needed peace of mind, yeah. going to the Word of God and finding peace of mind. I could see her when she needed reminding of the promises of God. I could see her going to the old... And it was King James. Amen? Yeah. I could see her going to the old book and opening up the pages and reading the promises of God. Amen? Yeah. At the time when she thought things were going to destroy her, she would read over there that all things work together for good to them that love God and are the according to His purpose. Amen? Amen? Whenever she needed some oh, peace, boy. she would read over there where Jesus said, My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives you peace. And she would read over there, Peace that passes all understanding. Amen? Amen? And I could see her drawing strength from the Word of God. And the Spirit of the Lord quickened that to me that day. Not that I didn't already know it, but He wanted us to go over it again. Amen? In the day that we live in, we better be rooted and grounded in the Word of God. Amen? You can turn on the television this morning and see thousands of people <clears throat> deceived into believing some crazy cockeyed story that man has made up as he stands there in the pulpit delivering what he, what he represents to them as being the Word of God. And if the one sitting there in the seat simply knew the Word for themselves, at least half of them, maybe more, get up and walk out. Amen. Amen. True. If Christians really knew the Word for themselves. Right. And I've encountered many people over the years and they would get to talking about something and I would say, well, where's that at in the Word? Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on. You see, I was told years ago, if I didn't understand something, just put it on the shelf. Well, one day I had to clean my shelf off. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. It got pretty full of things that I could not find inside the book. Yeah. Hey, I don't care who you are. I don't care how big of an evangelist you are. Right. How big of a pastor you are. I don't care if you got a revelation in your basement. Come on. If it does not line up with the Word of God, you can take it somewhere else down the road because I don't intend to swallow it. Amen? Amen. This book started me out. This book will send me home. Amen? Amen? I believe today the Word of God. And anything that contradicts yes, it, you can Lord. have it. I don't want it. Amen? Come on. And that's what we've been talking about. How that we as individuals must feed upon and trust the Word of God. Amen. People change. Right. Things change. Amen. 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 But Jesus Christ said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. The Bible says his, his, that heaven and earth will pass away, but His Word shall remain. 
Amen. So if you feel like today there's nothing solid to hold on to. There's just nowhere to stand that doesn't give way under your feet. Right. I want to point you today, and we've been pointing you, <laughs> to the only sure, solid foundation today, Amen. and that is the Word of God. Amen. Amen. David said, It is a lamp to my feet, it is a light unto my path. Without it, there is no light. Without it, there is no conviction. Right. Without it, there is no morals. Amen. Without it, there is there is lawlessness. Amen. Amen. Without it, you have no compass to guide you through the way. Amen. Amen. And that brought us to last week's message. How that our nation and the morals has declined. Right. How that it gets wickeder and more wicked all the time and more evil all the time. Amen. Evil seducers waxing worse and worse. And I told you that the fact that the Word of God has been put on the back burner throughout completely. Amen. And the fact that America no longer has any morals are not two things that do not associate one with the other. They go hand in hand. When you get rid of God's Word, you get rid of conviction. When you get rid of God's Word, you get rid of light. When you get rid of God's Word, you get rid of direction and divine, di divine direction for your life. So when we take the Ten Commandments off of the courthouse walls, whenever we expel God from our classrooms, whenever we decide that God no longer has a place in society, we will begin to see a society that kills our babies before they come forth out of their mother's womb and call it a choice. We will begin to see a society that, that decides that that which is called an abomination in the eyes of God is an alternate lifestyle. Amen? We will begin to see a nation sink deeper and deeper into the mire of a, of a, of a, of a hellish pit of sin because they have forsaken the Word of God. Amen. And when a nation forsakes God and His Word, yes. well, we're seeing it today Come on. in our headlines. Murder at an all-time high. Yeah. Rape at an all-time high. Amen. Those things which used to be an abomination used to be a shame. They're still an abomination. Let me reword Amen. that. Those things that people used to think was a shame. Come on. And they would hide it. <laughs> now they march down the streets of our city and proclaim that it's their right to be a pervert. Yeah. While the church sits on their hands with the book closed. Amen? Right. I told you, Granny didn't, Granny didn't use her Bible for a seat saver at church. Amen? Amen. Amen? When you went to her house, you wouldn't find no dust on Granny's Bible. Amen? Amen. Because she lived it wasn't just something she picked up on Sunday. Right. She picked it up on Monday. True. She fed on it on Tuesday. True. She fed on it on Wednesday. And if we're going to endure to the end, we better do the same thing. Yeah. If we're going to endure, if we're going to make it, if we're going to stand for Jesus and let the world go by, if we're going to have any standards, any convictions, any morals about us, we better turn to where they, they come from, where the inspiration comes from. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. For you, for doctrine, Amen. for reproof, for instruction, that we can be thoroughly furnished, perfect in all the works. And you know the scripture. Yeah. We we must have it today. And we read over there what was it? Psalms the hundred and nine. Psalm Psalms the hundred and nineteenth chapter, longest chapter of the Bible, wow. where David puts an emphasis on the Word of God. Yeah. Almost in every one of those verses, he talks about God's Word, how important it wow. is. It is important today that we have God's Word in our heart that we might not sin against God. It is important today for us to realize that God's Word is from everlasting. It is important for us to realize today that in the beginning, God spoke. Amen? His Word came forth. This, this earth that you see hinges on the Word of God. You can count on God's Word today. Amen. You can't count on anything else anymore, but you can count on God's Word. But we see a nation that has turned its back on God. Yes. That has no moral standards any longer. True. That has no regard for life. Right. How can we have our teenage girls pregnant without anybody knowing? Right. Have a baby without anybody knowing? Come on. And drop that baby in the trash can on their way out of the bathroom and just go on and live life as normal. Right. Because we're raising a generation that is wordless. Amen. Amen. And what do they find whenever they flock to our mega churches? You're okay. Yeah. I'm okay. Yeah. We're all okay. Right. 
life. You can have your best life now. Well, you can have your best life now if you want to, but you, your yeah. next life's going to be pretty bad. Amen. Yeah. Your next yeah. life's going to be pretty bad. Yes, sir. This ain't the best life you're going to have. No, Amen. No, One of these days we're going to cross over River Jordan. Amen. Yeah. And we're going to walk on streets yeah. of gold. And ain't going to be no more cancer. Ain't going to be no more sickness. Yeah. We're going to have a mansion then. Amen. And walk on streets of gold. Hallelujah. Yeah. So if you want your best life now, you can have that. Amen. But I don't want that. <laughs> Amen. Right. I want my best life whenever I enter in those gates. Amen. Right. Whenever I begin to, whenever I kneel down in front of the one that died for me on the cross of Calvary, when I touch the nail scarred hands, amen, where the nails were at. Yes. And I say as Thomas did, my Lord and my God. Amen. So we see as individuals how we must have the word of God. Yeah. And how that if we know the word, we won't be <laughs> deceived because we will know the word. Right. When people come to you and say Jesus is coming on September the 11th, 2013, you know better. Come on. Because you know the Word. Right. He said no man knows the hour of the day. Yes. Amen. True. When people come to you, whatever, they, whatever the, the case, whenever they say we are gods, uh -huh. we have the creative power in our voice that God has, you know that that's crazy because Amen. the Word of God. I heard a preacher this past week preaching and he said that God is not the one that breathed life into the animals in the book of Genesis. That Adam did. Said that God created the animal and He brought all the animals. They were manic as mannequins because they were dead. There was no life in them. He just created them as sculptors, sculptures. And He picks all these animals up and He brings them and He sets them down in front of Adam. And Adam breathes life into these animals. Mm. When you hear something like that, yeah. you know to just... Lift your hands and say, Lord, please help him. Help him, Lord, to know the truth. Amen. Amen. Why? Because you know the truth of the Word of God. Yeah. Man does not have the ability, the ability to breathe forth life on his own. Amen. Right. In the beginning, if you'd have been there and if you'd have said, let there be light. Uh -huh. <laughs> light. Yeah. Nothing. Still dark. Still dark. But when God says it, oh, yeah. hallelujah. When God says, let there be light. Darkness says, excuse me, while I step out of the way. Amen. Hallelujah. You ain't God. But they'll tell you that you are. That you're a little God. That you have that creative power in your voice. But if you know the Word, then you know better. Amen. So what happens when a nation has forsaken the Word of God? What happens when a nation would rather live in darkness rather than light? And that's what we read over there in John, the third chapter. Because men love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. Easier to do evil things in the dark. That's why they don't like the light. That's why a lot of Christians won't read it. Afraid they'll see something in there they're doing wrong. <laughs> Amen. James calls it a mirror. When you look into the mirror of the Word of God, he talks about a man that looks into the glass and he walks away from it and forgets what manner of man he was. Oh. We don't like to look in the mirror. Think about it. Sometimes when you get up out of bed in the morning, you go to the bathroom and look in the mirror. <laughs> Amen? Same way with the Word of God. They don't want to see it. That's why they don't want the Ten Commandments hanging in their, in their courthouses and in the public square. Because if the Ten Commandments is in the public square, they're going to be reminded of the adultery that they're living in. They're going to be reminded of the lying that they do. They're going to be reminded of the stealing that they do. They're going to be reminded of the other gods that they follow after rather than the one true God. Amen? Yeah. So we will put God's Word away and things begin to get darker. Amen. And darker. True. What happens whenever darkness engulfs a nation or grips a nation? We find a situation like this in 1 Samuel, the third chapter. Go with me there this morning. <laughs> First Samuel, the third chapter. Brother Wade asked me, did we get out by 3 o'clock? And I told him, yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'll let you out by 2.30 anyway. Right. Praise the Lord. Oh, we won't be here that long. But I want you to see something that we almost got to last Sunday. <laughs> I'm getting so long-winded, all my sermons turns into series. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. First Samuel, the third chapter. And we find Israel in a place of darkness. <clears throat> See, Israel, they were like us. When things got bad, they went running to God. Oh God, <clears throat> save us. Deliver us, oh God. And He would. 
And then things would get good. They would wax fat and then they would kick against the Word of God. Kick against the, the will of God. Amen? Amen. That's the way we do a lot of times. Amen? Come on. Some people, you see them with the Bible, you know they're in trouble with the law. Right. Amen? I used to have an uncle, he got real spiritual every time it was looked like he's going to go to jail. Amen? Come on. So that's the way it is sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And Israel was the same way. When things were going good, they, they strayed from God. They strayed from His Word. And any time we begin to set God's Word aside, any time that some light is done away with, the darker things get. And that's what we see in America today, and that's what we see here. And let's see today what happens whenever we find ourselves gripped by darkness. What does God do? Now, God has every right. All throughout the history of man, He has had every right to wipe us off the face of the earth. In the Garden of Eden, whenever he found Adam and Eve there with their fig leaves, he had every right to say, that's it. I told you all, you can, touch a, you, can, you can eat of every tree in the garden, but don't eat of that one right there. He had every right, by the way, to say, that's it. I want to kill you right here. Every right. But see, His mercy and His grace goes beyond what we can think. Amen. So He has mercy on them. And all throughout the history of the world we find that. <clears throat> Amen. So what do we find here in 1 Samuel the third chapter? Let's read that this morning. We find the nation of Israel in a place of gripped by the hard hand of darkness. And let's see what happens. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli. And the word of the Lord was precious. That meant it was rare. It was hard to find. It was a rare thing Amen. in those days. Right. The day that we live in, it gets more scarce and scarce all the time. Yes, Amen. True. It was precious in those days and there was no open vision. Why was there no open vision? Because of sin and things that had taken place that had cut the Word of God off. <laughs> If you read before this, you'll find the condition of Israel. You'll find the condition of the priest Eli and the wickedness and abominable things that his sons had done and he had not restrained them. Yeah. That's what brings them to this place. How did America get to the place she is today? Because America decided she loved darkness rather than light. Amen? Because sin has overtaken. Anytime sin comes in, darkness comes with it. Amen. Amen. True. Anytime sin comes in, there's darkness. Right. So we find here, oh, in Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision. You see this here says, Samuel says, there's no open vision. Proverbs uh, 29 and 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Now when you look at that keepeth, you might think, well, that just means somebody that that keeps the Ten Commandments, and they keep, you know, they don't lie, they don't steal. But that's not all that that Hebrew word there means. That Hebrew word means to guard. It means to keep with a hedge. It means to protect. See, God looking for some people today that's not willing to just take anything that's got Holy Bible stamped on the spine of it as being His Word. He's looking for some people that will protect His Word today. Some people that will stand for His Word. Some people that still believe that God's Word is not just, well, there's some truth in there. No, and that people that believe it whenever He says Thy Word is truth. Amen? Amen. People that will still stand on the Word of God. Listen, whether you like it or whether I don't like it, it don't change the book. Amen? I read some stuff in here that hits me between the eyes and makes me quiver all the way down to my shoes. Amen? And I think, Oh God, I got lined up with that right there. And yes, I do. I can't change that. Amen. Amen. There's no changing the Word of God today. Exactly. You can't. You can go out here today and find a book right. that says Bible that fits your needs. Yeah. Yeah. They've got them out there that are gay friendly. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Homosexual friendly. They got them out there today that that are 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 uh, are uh, 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 yeah. That it, Men and women neutral, whatever, how you say that. The, the, the male and female, gender neutral. I'll get it out in a minute. They are gender neutral. Amen. They don't call God He. They just call Him God because they don't want to offend the women. Amen. Because some people think God's a woman. Amen. They don't understand God has a male and female side. Both. Amen. Hallelujah. But we find here 
That the word means to keep. It means to hedge about. It means to guard and it means to protect. So God's looking for some people that will protect His word. Eli had not done that. Eli had not protected the, the office of priest. So we find that the word of God is precious in those days. We find that there is no open vision. And we find during this time of darkness, during this time where there was a lack of revelation, during this time where the Word of God was rare, and Israel was off track in a bad way, and darkness had gripped their land, what do we find? We find the priest Eli in verse 2, and it came to pass at that time when Eli was laid down in his place. His eyes began to wax dim that he could not see. Now some scholars believe that meant spiritually. Some scholars believe that, that meant physically. I personally believe it meant both. Amen. He had went blind spiritually. He was going blind in the natural. And we find a man who slowly but surely the Spirit of the Lord is departing from this high priest because he has forsaken the Word of God, the commandment of God. He has allowed his sons to get by with things that were ungodly and abominable. Amen. In the house and the temple of the Lord. Hallelujah. His sons had committed abominations in God's house. There was no word. There was no vision. There was no guidance. There was no light, Brother Sleece. There was no... There was no leader there for them. Not, no spiritual leader for them people. Verse 3 says, And air, the lamp of God, went out in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. And Samuel was laid down to sleep. The lamp went out. There was no light. No word of God. No illumination. And where there is no word of God, where there is no revelation from God, there are no answers. There, are no, there is no hope. That's why Saul went to the witch of Endor because his sin and his rebellion had cut off the Word of God. And he couldn't get an answer from God. God's Word could not be found for, the, for, for King Saul. So he goes to a witch for answers. Amen? We find here Israel in that kind of state. And the priest Eli has lost his way. We see an example of what we talked about last week. A nation, a society, an individual that has forsaken the Word of God. And thank God today that that ain't all of the story though. Israel had some rough days ahead of it. But even in the midst of this darkness, God was doing something. Even in your darkest trial, Sister Lou, God is doing something. We may not see it, Brother Wade, but God is doing something. In the darkest day of your life and you think God is a million miles away and He cares not for you, He's working on a plan for your life. Amen. Amen. He hasn't left. He's still there. His Word says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. So it don't matter if Brother Billy feels Him or not. If Brother Billy can sense Him or not. If Brother Billy has goosebumps or not. God's still there. He said He'd never leave me. He'd never forsake me. And if I go through the, the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? For Thou art with me. Thy rod and Thy staff, they comfort me. He gave us His Word to fall back on today. Amen. To be able to go and, and to read how He delivered Moses, how He delivered Daniel, how He delivered David, how He delivered the Hebrew children, and to know today that He's no respecter of persons. If He did it for them, He will do it for you. Amen. True. We find Israel in a place of darkness. We find Eli has backslid. Right. That's where most pastors are at today. <laughs> There's a sign over here in the post office hanging up of an event that is sponsored by a local church here in this area, just a few miles up the road, of a concert that they're going to have next Saturday at the Wooden Bridge. And because it was sponsored by the church, I don't guess I, don't guess I have to keep it a secret. They got it on the sign over here, the United Methodist Church in Ireland. has big letters there, sponsored by the United Methodist Church in Ireland. And the, the groups I'd never heard of before, so when I was checking the mail, I jotted the groups down and I went home and looked them up. I guarantee you, if you took the groups that they are sponsoring for our young people next Saturday over there, and you put them side by side with the latest rock bands, heavy metal bands that are out there today, you wouldn't be able to decide hmm, which one of them is supposed to be the Christian group. Which one? See, we have mixed good and evil, and the lines have become so blurred that the church uses the things of the world to draw a crowd to a holy God. That don't work. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. That don't work. Right. And I looked up some of these groups. And I'm not going to preach clothesline this morning, but some of them were half-dressed. Had videos on there of them doing their concerts. The drummer had on no shirt. Tattooed. The men had longer hair than my wife. The ones that didn't, it was spiked in different colors. Come on. And this was supposed to be something sponsored, and it grieved my spirit to see that. Amen. That's the cat. See, that's the as the church goes, I believe so goes the world. Amen. Amen. Truth. The church is backslid. That's what happened here. Absolutely. When Eli backslid, when he whenever he, he winked at the sins of his sons and didn't take heed to the warning of God, then we see the entire nation begins to suffer because of it. Come on. When Achan took the Babylonian garment and the, and the gold there and he hides it in the center of his tent, yep. who suffers because of it? Just Achan? No. The entire people of Israel because they begin to lose the battle. And Joshua says, God, what's wrong? We're losing the battle. We're not supposed to. You're on our side. He said, because there's sin in the camp. Amen. Amen. Right. That's what's wrong with the church. Absolutely. Sin in the camp. Yes, Amen. Sir. Deacons sleeping with song leaders. Right. Amen. I ain't talking about because they're married. They're married to somebody else. They're sleeping with somebody else. Amen. All right. Pastors preaching every ungodly and just to try and get somebody. We don't want to offend nobody. Yeah. Pastors getting on television and saying, well, in our services every Sunday, we have Muslims, we have Buddhists, yeah. we have homosexuals, yeah. we have atheists, and they all worship together. They all go out feeling good. Well, I wouldn't tell nobody that if I was you. Amen. Amen. Right. I wouldn't brag on it if I was you. Right. It tells a little bit more about you than you probably want people to know. That means you ain't preaching no truth. Amen. Amen. If you can come to the voice of the Lord Tabernacle and live an ungodly sin and fornicating life and you don't feel no conviction, you need to get a different pastor. Brother Billy needs to go back to the drawing board and figure out what I ain't doing right. Amen. You're supposed to feel bad if you're living in sin. Amen. Yeah. I don't want to make you feel bad today, but if you're living in sin, I hope to God you do feel bad this morning. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. When you get in trouble, it's when you have no convictions at all. I realize that my convictions and yours may not be the same, but it grieves me and concerns me this morning, Brother Sleeves, when I see a people that have no convictions at all. Amen. 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 They can say anything, do anything, go anywhere, watch anything, dress anyway. They can drink booze and smoke dope and do everything and still exactly. think they're okay. Yeah. That is the fruit of a nation that has put away God right. and His Word. Right. Had decided we no longer need Him. True. He's not relevant in society today. Uh, Eli had chosen the wrong trail and that's where we find Israel. We find them in this place of darkness. And if we could see with our spiritual eyes today, yeah. if we could step back and see our nation from afar, we would see that darkness hovering over our nation today. So what do we find that God does here? When it looks like for all intents and purposes, you can stand back and say, Oh, they messed up. Yeah. It's over. The end is near. Let's see what he does. <clears throat> Here we find Samuel and Eli went to bed there. Samuel's laying down, and remember, in this time of darkness, when it's when God could have just washed his hands and said, No, no, just forget it. Let's do away with it. That's all we. I've had enough of them. What's verse 4 say? The Lord called Samuel. Was it a whisper? I think maybe it was. It couldn't have been too loud because he ran to where Eli was at and he thought maybe Eli had called his name. Had you ever been in one room of the house and somebody else was at the other end or, and you'd hear something and you'd think, oh, that's Sister Wade. That's Lou. I go see what she wants, and you get in, and she says, "I didn't, I didn't holler for you." That's what was going on with Samuel and Eli here. Samuel's laying there, and he's still young. Yeah. Amen. Come on. And he hears a voice. Samuel he says, "Oh, Eli must need me." So he goes to Eli, but Eli says, "I didn't come for you." <clears throat> He's go back, he goes back and he lays down. Again, three times this happens. Three times he hears this voice saying, Samuel. 
Oh, I wish I could give this to you the way that God has given it to me this morning. In this time of darkness. In this time whenever sin is, on, is, is rampant. In this time whenever darkness has gripped a nation. What does God do? Oh, are you following me this morning? Amen. He calls His men and women to stand for truth Amen. and to hold up the blood-stained banner of the cross, to let the old light shine once again. Amen. Hallelujah. We find here in this place of darkness, in this time of sin, we find God calls Samuel. Finally, he goes to Eli the last time and Eli perceives that it must be God calling him because I'm not saying anything. And He tells Samuel, you go lay down. Verse 9 says, Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and he laid down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, and he called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. What's God going to do here for Israel in this time of darkness? <laughs> Same thing He's doing today in these last days. The Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel at which both the ears of everyone that heareth it shall tingle. Amen. God is doing something today in the spiritual realm. I hear it when I'm asleep. I hear it whenever I'm praying. I hear it whenever I'm meditating on the Word and I'm walking with walking around these pews and praying each day. I hear God calling for a people like David that are hungry for Him, thirsty, that pants after Him as the heart does after the water brook. That God's still looking for somebody that's after His heart. Not seeking after His hand, but after His heart. Amen? I told you before, if we'll seek His face, His hand will follow. God's still looking for somebody that will raise up the old bloodstained banner and say, I believe that Jesus Christ is not just a way or one of the ways. He is the only way today and you will not get there without Him. Amen. He's sick of preachers that say, well, I believe Jesus is the way, but if you know other people, can, if they'll turn to the light, they know. Or if they'll just turn to the God that they know. No, you got to go through Jesus or you're not going to go. Amen. I didn't write the book. That's what it said. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. It's time that we had some men of God that had some backbone and didn't care how many were in the pews, didn't care how popular they were or how much offers were coming in and stood and said, this is what does say God. Amen? Amen? We don't have enough preachers preaching the truth to shake a stick at. Amen? Exactly. Amen? You can go through your TV channels today and that'll prove what I'm saying. Absolutely. Amen? But thank God. Yeah. He's always had a remnant. Yeah. He'll have a remnant now. That's right. I know sometimes it feels like that we're like Elijah up there on the mountain and we say, God, I'm the only one. Uh -huh. Ain't nobody else serving you. Everybody else is doing whatever and saying whatever and going wherever and they're doing whatever and I'm the only one left. Right. And God spoke to Elijah. What did He tell him? I got 7,000 right. that have not bowed that need to bow. Amen. He still has a remnant. Right. He still has a remnant. Amen. Amen. He still has a remnant today. That's, right. That's what he's calling up out of this. He's calling Samuel. Yeah. Now there had been men that had prophesied before. Yeah. But Samuel would step into the office of the prophet like none ever before. He would, he would be the one that would talk to Saul. Yeah. You remember that? Mom. He would go to Saul and say, the Lord has taken the kingdom away from you. And giving it to your neighbor. Why? Because he found a man that was after his heart. Amen. Right. Groves of people gathering to get today in places, Amen. in buildings, no spirit. Because God has withdrawn himself. Brother Hitton used to say that God will let you get by for a little while. Yeah. But sooner or later, he'll withdraw himself. Right. Amen. True. Sooner or later. He would draw himself. Absolutely. That's what happens here. Yes. If you read chapter 4, that's what happens here. 
In chapter 4, we find the Philistines and the Israelites are going to have battle. We find that the first day of the battle didn't go very well for the Israelites. I forget how many they lost, but it was thousands. And they try and figure out what's going on. Right. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll send and we'll get the Ark of the Covenant from Shiloh. So they sent to get the Ark of the Covenant, and you'll read there that Eli's sons that had committed the abominations, they're still there. They're there with the Ark. Amen. So they said, instead of repenting, instead of putting sin out of the way, oh. they sinned for what represented the headship and the spirit of the anointing, the presence of God. They right. say, bring that. And you'll find that when they brought that into the city, Come when on. they brought that into the midst of the congregation, Come they all shouted with joy. Yes. But sin is still there. Right. Eli's sons are still in the office that they were in. They hadn't been kicked out of it yet. They hadn't been got rid of. Exactly. Because whenever the Philistines take the ark, <coughs> go over there and read that. They go in there and they take the ark and guess who's there? Eli's sons. They kill Eli's sons and they take the ark of the covenant, the headship of God. Now, this wouldn't be no good thing for the Philistines either. No. I think this might be where they learn all about hemorrhoids <laughs> and stuff. Come on. They would be cursed. Mm -hmm. Amen? True. But Israel would weep and mourn and lament right. because God's Spirit, His headship, had been taken away. And what caused it? Because they had forsaken the Word of God. Uh, because Eli had forsaken God's command. Amen. So the Philistines take the Ark of the Covenant. They kill Eli's sons. Yeah. One of them runs to Eli. One of the men that escaped there, he runs to Eli and says, Eli wants to what's all this weeping? What's all this, this moaning and wailing? What's going on? He says, the Philistines had the ark of the Lord. And your sons are dead. And when Eli hears this, he falls over backwards. And he's dead. And you find a young woman, his daughter-in-law, I believe, Let me find it here. Oh, wait a minute. Let me don't let me miss this. When they brought the Ark of the Covenant, let's see what it says. It says in the word of Samuel, I mean <coughs> four and one. I want to read a few verses here, and I'm getting ready to close. And the word of Samuel came to all of Israel. Now Israel went out against the Philistines in battle and pitched beside Ebenezer. The Philistines pitched in Aphek. And the Philistines put themselves in array against Israel. And when they joined battle, Israel was smitten before the Philistines and they slew of the army in the field about 4,000 men. So you see, things weren't going very well. That's what I tried to tell you about a while ago. When the people were coming to the camp, the elders said, Wherefore hath the Lord smitten us today before the Philistines? Let us fetch the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us that when it cometh among us it may save us out of the hand of our enemies so the people sent to Shiloh that they might bring from thence the ark of the covenant of the Lord of hosts which dwelleth between the cherubims and the two sons of Eli and I can't say their names too good so you'll have to forgive me Hophni and Phinehas that's close enough were with the ark of the covenant of God See, there's the two men that had committed the abomination that their daddy had allowed and hadn't restrained them. So sin's still there. They're not dealing with no sin. But they're fixing to have a good old shouting time. When the ark of the covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout so that the earth rang again. Still, there was no repentance, folks. No dealing with sin, but they still shouting. Sin in the camp and they're shouting. All right. <laughs> yeah. I start calling them holy rollers, but I guess they'd be unholy rollers. Amen. Amen. And don't tell me that. Don't tell me just because people are jumping the pew and running the aisles that everything's fine. Right. I've seen them shout the aisle on Sunday night and commit adultery with somebody on Monday. Right. And they'd be back on Wednesday night to shout the aisles again. Amen. Amen. True. Sooner or later, God cuts off His spirit. Right. Amen. True. 
That's what we find here. So then they think, well, we've got the we've got the headship of God. We got God with us now for sure. See, God won't bless your mess. Right. Amen. True. God won't bless your mess. Absolutely. Sin still take you farther than you want to go, cost you more than you want to pay, and keep you longer than you want to stay. Amen. Right. Listen to this. And when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, now the Philistines are going to get worried because Israel's shouting and hooping for joy, and they think, oh no, that God that delivered them before, He's with them now. But they gird up their loins like men and they go fight anyway. And guess what happens? In verse 10, the Philistines fought and Israel was smitten and they fled every man into his tent. And there was a great slaughter for there fell of Israel 30,000 footmen. So brother, really, what in the world are you trying to say? What does this got to do with us? I'm trying to tell you. All of this started when they forsook God's Word. All of it started when they turned their back on God. All of it started whenever they would rather have darkness than light. Amen? All of it was do the same thing today. Is God merciful? Yes. Is He compassionate? Yes. But sooner or later, you will reap the rotten fruit that you have planted. Amen? Come on. Sooner or later, you got to eat from your own garden. Yes, sir. Amen? Sure. You can feed off His mercy for a little while, Brother Wade. You can feed off His grace for a little while, but sooner or later, Brother Wade, you're going to have to eat the fruit He planted. Amen? Yes. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Sooner or later, we will eat from our own garden. And that's what's happened with Israel here. And the ark of God was taken. This is verse 11. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, I wish they'd had easier names, Bill and Bob, you know, something I could pronounce better, but they didn't. And the two sons of Eli were slain. And there ran a man of Benjamin, here's what I was trying to tell you about a while ago, out of the army, and came to Shiloh the same day, for his clothes were rent, and there was earth upon his head. He's about half dead. Verse 13, when he gets to Eli, there sits Eli. When he came to Eli, Eli sat up on the wayside watching, for his heart trembled for the ark of God. And when the men came into the city and told it, all the city cried out. And when Eli heard the noise of the crying, he said, What meaneth the noise of this turmoil, this tumult? And the man came in hastily and told Eli. Now Eli was ninety and eight years old. Now stay with me. This is this where I'm closing. He was ninety and eight years old, his eyes were dim, that he could not see. And the man said unto Eli, I am he that came out of the army, and I fled today out of the army. And he said, What is there done, my son? And the messenger answered and said, Israel is fled from before the Philistines. There has been also a great slaughter among the people, and thy two sons also, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead, and the ark of God is taken. And it came to pass when he made mention of the ark of God, talking about Eli, he fell from off the seat backward by the side of the gate and his neck break and he died for he was an old man and heavy and he had judged Israel for 40 years and his daughter-in-law which was one of his son's wife Phineas was with child near to be delivered and when she heard the tidings that the ark of God was taken that her father-in-law and her husband were dead she bowed herself and travailed for her pains came upon her. And about the time of her death, the woman that stood by her said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast born a son. But she answered not, neither did she regard it. She named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory is departed from Israel because the ark of God was taken and because her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, The glory is departed from Israel for the ark of God is taken. That's what happens when you expel God and His Word. And you can't have one without the other. Amen. You can put in God we trust on your money. You can proclaim God, you know, God, 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 God. But you can't have God without His Word. Amen. They're inseparable. Right. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Right. Amen. Amen. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. You can't have one without the other. Amen. Right. <laughs> This is what happens to a nation that forsakes God. God withdraws Himself. Right. His Spirit departs from that people. Amen. But remember, even in all this, there's still Samuel. Amen. Don't forget about Samuel. Right. He would be the one that would anoint David to be king. Right. He would be the pipeline for God's messages to the kings until he passed on. 
He would, he would uh, be in the office of the prophet and the mouthpiece of God. Even though this darkness had gripped this nation that, and, and, and this turmoil and this heartbreak and the ark had been taken, still God, we see His mercy personified in the prophet Samuel. Right. You read me what you saw, but I'm still here. I have left. David said, if I make my bed in hell, you're with me. Israel had forsaken God at this moment. They had, they had backslidden or however you want to word it. Right. It wasn't walking the way they were supposed to walk before God. The high priest had backslidden and sinned. But God still has Samuel. Right. God's still going to have Samuels in the last days that will proclaim His Word, that will stand for truth, that will hold up the Word of God and say Jesus is still the only answer. Jesus is still the only place to find peace. Jesus is still the only way to have hope. He still has Samuels today. And that's what He's calling. He's calling you and you and you Amen. and you and you. Say, well, wait a minute. See, in Old Testament times, there was indeed, you could look in the Old Testament and you could say, well, he was the prophet of God at that time. Mm -hmm. it, it scares me today whenever people say, well, Brother so and so, he's God's last day prophet. Mm -hmm. Or when they say, Sister so and so, she's God's last day messenger. Yeah. Uh uh. If we're going to reach this world for Jesus Christ, it's going to have to be done like it was in the book of Acts, like it was with Peter and Paul. Jesus didn't send out one man and say, you're my last day. You're going to do this thing. You're the only one. No, no, no. He sent out His disciples. Amen. You, as a Christian today, this burden rests upon your shoulders to let your light so shine before men so that they will see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen? Amen. God doesn't have just one ministry today. He doesn't have just one church, and I'm talking about, and I know he has a church and a body. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about just one group of people that it's laid upon them to, to reach everybody because I don't care how popular Brother Wade gets, how many people he reaches, there will be people he can't reach that I can. Amen. There are people that he can reach that I can't. Right. I have I've met people, and you know, they talk about how many people Billy Graham has has you know been able to reach in his ministry. Well, that's great, that's good. I meet people all the time that Billy Graham didn't reach. Right. Amen. Same goes for Brother Swigert and any other big preachers that, that have had the big platform. Mm -hmm. No matter how big you get, there's always going to be somebody that you cannot reach. Absolutely. Amen. Always going to be somebody. See, there's some people, they won't listen to me, but they right. will listen to Brother Wade. Exactly. There's some people that Brother Slice could reach right. that I can't reach. Amen. So see, you can't just you can't just get on the wagon for the ride. You're going to have to put some elbow grease in it. Amen. Amen. You're going to have to be one of the people. You're going to have to put it upon the... The Bible says that if you put your hand in the plow and look back, you're not worthy. Right. Today, every one of us, if you're a born-again Christian, there is a burden that is laid upon you today to reach the lost, to help fulfill the Great Commission. Right. Amen. True. As much as we are doing and we're trying to do as much as we can, Amen. with the radio and the videos and the CDs and the newsletters and the tapes and everything that we've got, we do, but we can't reach everybody. Right. Amen. True. I learned that a long time ago. We can't reach everybody. True. But if each one of us will do our part, we can reach people. Amen. Amen. You, you work with people that I can't. They never, they never even meet me, but they know you. Amen. Amen. Every one of us today should hear that call that Samuel heard. Right. And every one of us today should have that same answer. Amen. I'm your servant. Yes. Amen. Willing vessel. I'm your servant. Here I am, Lord. I'm your servant. Yeah. Speak for thy servant here. Every one of us today have an obligation to let our light shine in a world of darkness. And Brother Slee said something last Sunday morning. Even if you, you know, we go around singing, this little light of mine, I'm a little light. But even if your light is little, the darker it gets out there, the brighter your light is. Right. Heard old folks talk about coon hunting before, and they talk about how that they'd be out deep in the woods, mm -hmm. and they'd see a porch light way off in the distance. Yeah. Probably wasn't 60, 90 watts. But out there in that darkness, 
They could see it because oh, right. the more darkness, the brighter your light is. Well, I ain't got much. Well, use what you got. Yes, amen. amen. I can't do much. Well, do what you can. Do what you can. How many times we use that for an excuse? Well, I can't do much, so I won't do nothing. Well, how stupid are we? Amen? Just because you can't do much don't mean don't do nothing. That just means do what you can. Amen? Right. People dying and going to hell today. Right. And we can do something about it. We can tell them about Jesus. You know what I used to like at school? They used to have something called show and tell. Yeah. I didn't ever have much nothing to take. But I enjoyed seeing what the other kids had. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I don't think they wanted to see what I had to show. <laughs> I had a broken toy. But anyway, <clears throat> they didn't just tell you about it. They showed it to you. Because right. there's something about being able to see it and being told about it. Right. People love it when you tell them about something. True. They like it even more when they can see it. Amen? Amen. I go somewhere, Niagara Falls, and I come by and I tell you how beautiful it was. Well, you get somewhat of a picture in your mind. But if I can show you a picture, if you're there yourself, yeah. people get tired of hearing what you've got, but they don't see it in your life. Amen? Amen. We need to have some show and tell with the world. Amen? Amen. Don't just tell them what you got. Show them what you got. Amen? Good. Let them see Jesus in Sleece Butler. Come on. Don't just tell them about Him. Show Him to them. Right. Show them His love. Amen. His mercy. His compassion. Grab a hold of His Word and stand on it in these last days. Be a Samuel. Amen. Yes. Obey the voice of God and let the light of His Word shine into the darkness. Oh. Someone else this morning have something.